All that as the lead singer of Westlife. <laughs> oh, you've heard of them. <laughs> One of the biggest pop acts in recent years. My first guest was quite literally flying without wings. Together with the band, he achieved 14 number one singles, sold 44 million records, and was adored by fans the world over. joy it brings when you found that special thing you're flying without wings when the band split in 2012 his life was to change in a way he never imagined possible here to explain please welcome shane Filan. <laughs> It was phenomenal. I mean, your feet literally, you were flying without wings. Your feet didn't touch the ground, yeah. did they? It was an astonishingly stratospheric flight to fame, really. It was, yeah. Westlife was uh, incredible. Half my life, you know, and it was, it was mm. unbelievable. We literally didn't have a minute to think, you know. And I was thinking about it the other day, that, you know, our first tour, our first live tour, we had eight number one singles, you know, it, yeah. was, it was crazy. Um, but amazing, you know, amazing memories to look back on. Yeah. You, so how old were you when it started? I was 19. Yeah. And when it finished and the group split uh, up? 33. So it's a good... Show me age there. <laughs> a good long run. I yeah, mean. it was long, yeah, it was like nearly, it was nearly 15 years, you know, it was uh, a long time. But we, we kind of never really realised how kind of... We, we were doing an album a year, it was, it was crazy, the schedule, mm. you know, we... We kept making them, they kept kind of going to number one, they kept being very successful, so we just kept putting them out and we did like nine albums in ten years, you know, so it was, it was pretty full on, but now, it was great. Now, the, the autobiography, My Side of Life, yeah. Shane Filan, chronicles those years, but it also chronicles this astonishing bankruptcy. Who would have thought that from Westlife and all the, you know, the, the money you were earning, the millions you were earning mm. as a group then, that you could end up, what went wrong? I, I tried to invest it. You know, and that's basically the, the kind of the bones that I, I obviously Westlake did very well. We made a lot of money, um, especially for our age. And but it kind of came to a stage where halfway through the band, you're kind of thinking, you know, Brian had just left, and I, I just had a daughter, and I thought to myself, you know, I need to I need to invest for the future here. Like this could be over in a year. It could so be over. So you were being ostensibly, you're being sensible. Yeah, I thought, you know, I, the only other thing, you know, I, I liked it. You know, I liked maybe a car here and there, but it wasn't I wasn't flash. I didn't like buying loads of stuff. I was always trying to save it, but I thought, if the band ends tomorrow, this won't last forever. And I have a family, I have a young family coming along, and I, I basically wanted to invest in it. I invested in Irish property, mainly in my hometown in Sligo, actually. I kept most of it in Ireland. And you invested, therefore, at the boom? Yeah, I bought in the boom. Um, and then, obviously, what we tried to do is we tried to buy certain sites and, and develop them, like supermarkets, different things that I thought was needed in my hometown, because I didn't know anything about the rest of Ireland. I wasn't really a property expert, obviously. I didn't go international at all. And I thought, you know, build stuff that's needed. Um, so we built, you know, we tried to build supermarkets, a nursing home, different things that we thought were needed in the local kind of community. Mm. Um, but it took three or four years to get planning. That was the problem. It took an awful long time. We had a lot of kind of objections and different things delaying, delaying the so whole how process. Did you, so how did money was invested in, in, in land, how did you manage to lose it? Was it the land then lost its value? Basically, yeah, in, in the three or four years, kind of trying to get the plan, and then we, we eventually got the plan for all of them, but when we got there then, we had no, the banks had no money to give us the other half of the money mm -hmm. to build the project so, so we could sell them. So, so we basically had a load of green fields. You ended up filing for bankruptcy to the tune of what? What did you owe? 18 million. Pounds. It's a huge amount of money. You're it's coming massive, out yeah. the other side. You've now got this career as a solo artist. Your family has clearly been very important to you. Your wife, Janine, in keeping you anchored. You've known each other since you were how old? Uh, 13, yeah. We've yeah. known each other a long time. How important has family been to it's you? It's unbelievable. You know, and I think, Alan, when you, when you lose all the money and lose all the, the stuff you've worked your whole life for, literally, that's what, what it was like. You know, we'd, I did all of Westlife, and we had all the memories and stuff like that, but when you lose everything, you realise what you have, and, and what I had was a great marriage. I had three healthy children. 
Um, and I kind of had a really happy family, and so, that's the most important thing. Where are we now, then? Thank you. So, what's the situation now? Um, I still have a great marriage and a happy family. Well, that's <laughs> really... Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's... I'm, I'm happier, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot happier than I was, obviously, a few years ago. It was a very difficult time, and that's kind of the main reason I did the book, to kind of talk about how, how difficult it was and trying to explain yeah. to the fans or people that follow me or just people in general that are struggling with money because everybody in some way are struggling whether it's a, a credit card bill or a, a property thing it, it's the same kind of pressure and anxiety yeah. you feel so you, it, I think it's helped me kind of move on with my life and kind of get to a stage where I'm singing now and from kind of this week on or next week on I can focus on singing and going back on yeah. tour and doing stuff that I love you know there you are. you've got support the solo career see you there solo career continues just that information on the tour westlife will you ever reunite will you ever get back I, together? look I, I don't know is the honest answer it's a question i get asked every day alan and it's something that but would you, at the moment, would you if no everybody plans. else is willing oh of course i think yeah. it'd be great fun someday to do something again um mm -hmm. but there's no plans and that's why i said it in the book as well and as you know the lads feel the same way you know we're kind of we're on our own kind of paths at the moment, but look, Westlife was incredible. You know, we created history together. You've so left you never us know. with a lot of tunes that we love, and just listening to that little compilation before we came on. I, I saw thought, that, yeah, yeah, the fly with that wing thing. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, how young do I look? I look like a baby in it, but um, <laughs> great memories. You know, Westlife was incredible, and you know, I'm I'm trying to, I suppose, create new memories now and, and move on. Well, in your book, you mention your family's love of horses, and am um, I right in thinking you won show jumping trophies as a child? I did a few. Oh my god, there's well, that's there. Uh, well, it's time to take to the saddle the in tiny our horse off, because whose thighs will grip the longest, Shane's or mine? But then it seemed to me rather unfair for me to expect Shane to come up to my high equestrian standards. <laughs> so in my place, please welcome a jockey who looks suspiciously like our warm-up man, Andy Collins. <laughs> <Over again. laughs> This is Andy. Now, Andy is a, you, a fearsome jockey. You know Andy. I do know Andy. So, right you're, up, you're up first, and we're just inflating this, so you've got something nice to fall on. You go first, get on. Well, and when you're... Jacket, you take your jacket off. <laughs> Tell me when you're ready. <laughs> right? Tell me when you're ready. Oh, man, what are we doing? <laughs> See how long you can stay on. Oh, this Three, is, ready? This is really hard, Three, man. two, one, go. Have a go. Easy now, easy, easy. Seconds. Yeah. Oh, now, come on, Andy. Give me... You literally didn't break your neck. You're right. It's actually really difficult. It is. There we are. We've got to get him on for this. <laughs> Ten seconds to me. My Side of Life is out now, and you can catch him on tour until the 3rd of November. My thanks to a man who's making a great comeback, Shane Fowler, and to Andy Collins. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.